Comics have a complex history with censorship. Back in 1954, the Comics Code Authority was put into place after Frederick Wortham released his book Seduction of the Innocent, in which he claimed that comics were corrupting children. Some of his claims included that Batman and Robin were gay, Wonder Woman was sexually suggestive and promoted BDSM, and that Superman featured homoerotic subtext. While Wortham wasn't entirely wrong with these claims, the golden age is filled with sexually suggestive content, the censorship this promoted influenced a whole generation of readers. Wholesome superheroes who fit into the white picket fence American dream became the norm. And comics like Archie flourished, while others like EC Comics, Tales of the Crypt, and Vault of Horror were completely abolished. There were even court cases that went down over this. But from the ashes came a whole counterculture of comics, influencing a whole age of characters that embraced many of the inappropriate themes that Wortham and Co. were trying to evade. So let's jump into our list of top 10 inappropriate comic book characters. And heads up, guys, disclaimer there is some pretty offensive characters on this list, so fair warning. Number 10, we've got Gin Genie. You know what would make for a great complex character? A superhero with alcoholism. Yeah, no, no. Meet Gin Genie. As you probably guessed from her name, this is a superhero who was typically intoxicated. When she was drunk, she gave off seismic vibrations. The more she drank, the stronger the vibrations. While that seems all good and fun, she had a real issue with alcoholism and would often lash out against her teammates in a violent way. At number 9, we've got Hemogoblin. So if you've seen our top 10 dumbest superheroes list, you'll probably remember we mentioned a character named Extrano, who was basically an insensitive portrayal of a gay Latin man who just happened to be a magician. And one of the foes that he faced was the Hemogoblin, aka the AIDS vampire. No jokes. Hemogoblin went around attacking non white characters, and when he bit them, he gave them AIDS. This character was created during the 80s when AIDS was crippling America, and many people had misconceptions about how the disease was spread. While it was unclear as to whether or not Extrano was HIV positive prior to his bite from Hemogoblin is still unknown, but Hemogoblin still came off as a symbol of white supremacy. Plus, anything nicknamed AIDS Vampire is probably not that cool. Up next to number 8, we've got the Checkered Demon. An S. Clay Wilson creation, the Checkered Demon was a product of the underground comics of the late 60s, and he typically murdered bikers, pirates, and rapists. He also had a roster of promiscuous lovers, including Star Eyed Stella, Ruby the Dyke, and Lady Cousette. When he's not killing or having little remorse for human life, the Checkered Demon could be found getting his drink on. At number 7, we've got Arseface. This is a character who is part of the Preacher canon and appeared in issues between 1995 and 2000. Here we have a character who tried to recreate Kurt Cobain's suicide, and clearly he screwed it up. It leaves him unable to speak, contorting his mouth into something that kinda looks like an anus. While Garth Ennis had written Arseface as a complex character with a combination of empathy and brutality, the character's suicidal history and deformity tends to trigger a lot of audiences, especially in the TV version of Preacher. Up next to number 6 is The Mandarin. So here's another racially insensitive character from the 60s. First appearing in Tales of Suspense number 50 in 1964, The Mandarin was an enemy of Iron Man's, and while in recent years he's significantly become less offensive, the initial incarnation of the character is, well, take a look for yourself. Mainstream comics often dabbled in some pretty xenophobic characterizations of villains in the 50s and the 60s, so the whole Fu Manchu stereotype, yellow skin, buck teeth, and favoritism for communism is no surprise. While this may seem offensive now, at the time, North America was dealing with many bigoted views after the fallout of World War II, and portraying villains as Asian or darker skin characters was the norm for decades preceding this. At 5 we've got Hatemonger. So we've talked about Hatemonger in a few of our top 10 nerd lists, so it should be no surprise that this white supremacist would make this one. Hatemonger is a villain that the Fantastic Four take on, initially in 1963. He's got a hate ray that shoots out hatred. He wears a colorful KKK uniform, and he loves him some Nazi propaganda. Which makes sense, because when he's unhooded, he turns out to be Adolf Hitler. The character later returns in the Marvel Universe as a villain who dons Captain America's uniform and murders illegal immigrants. Yeah. And then again in Marvel's Fear Itself 2011 crossover, as a man who travels back in time to try to alter history by assassinating Barack Obama. At least he's consistent. At 4, we've got Shithead. Yes, this is a real thing. So, publisher Top Cow Comics created Shithead in 2003. Shithead is a shapeshifter made up of the fecal matter of the 666 evilest people who have ever lived, which includes the poop of Hitler and Jeffrey Dahmer. He can also alter his density on command, which, as you can imagine, probably is kind of gross. Fortunately, he was killed by a bunch of bleach being poured on him to weaken him, and then flushed down a toilet. His dying words? Eat shit and die. Classy. At number 3, we've got Devil Girl. 
Author and illustrator R. Crumb's work is arguably some of the most scandalous depictions of bigotry, racism, and sexism in comics to this day. While most of it was satire, much of his content depicted the inner desires that he and others of this generation wanted to immerse themselves in. Part confessional, part provocation. Devil Girl was definitely a provocative character. Crumb based Devil Girl off of his fantasy of being manhandled by a larger, more dominant woman, and thus Devil Girl became a returning character in his Mr. Natural storylines. Never shying away from nudity, Devil Girl was glorified and objectified. Quite literally. As in one story, her head pops off her body, and her body remains to provide pleasure for our protagonist. Regardless, you can see why Crumb's work was probably more suitable for adult eyes. Up next to number two, we've got Angel Food McSpade. Crumb didn't only create sexually provocative characters, oh no no no. He dabbled in race issues as well. Meet Angel Food McSpade. While these panels are quite self-explanatory, it's undeniable that Angel Food is a caricature of racial slurs. She's literally blackface personified. A blatantly offensive commentary on 50s and 60s systematic racism, Crumb would use a combination of commercial parody with a heavy dose of bigotry to raise questions about the way that Americans would treat those who were outside of the normalcy of whiteness. Angel Food McSpade was his poster girl for this, and Crumb created many strips with her that brought to light many of the bigotry based perceptions white people had about African Americans. Finally at number one, we've got Mr. Natural. Mr. Natural is another R. Crumb character, and is initially introduced as a mystic guru all about fighting off the evils of the modern world and embracing mysticism and natural living. He's also drawn like God, which wasn't well received by tamer audiences. Plus, he has a whole ton of sexual obsessions, which are always fun, clearly. Filled with phallic imagery, sexually suggestive themes, and nudity, plus lots of references to drugs, Mr. Natural tends to find himself spewing wisdom to readers, much of it a critique of mainstream media, comics, and capitalism as a whole. Turns out you can be dirty and thought provoking at the same time. While Crumb's other creations tended to be more on the excessive end of the spectrum, Mr. Natural represents the spirit of subversion and the spark of rebellion that underground comics instigated. And there we have it. Offended much? Remember though, comics are very much a product of the historical context of the time in which they were created, and in many cases, with more independent publishers, were an important creative outlet to express freedom of speech. So you get a lot of offensive stuff sometimes. But that's it for today though guys. I've been Kelly Pally for Top 10 Nerd, and make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you never miss another nerdy list. I'll catch you guys in the next one.